Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God very much for this opportunity to stand before you to share the word of the Lord. I come all the way from East Africa, from a smaller country called Uganda. Uganda is found in the East Africa. Uh, it's a small country compared to Australia. I think uh, Uganda is, uh, is 20, the size will be, will be 25, big as, uh, as Victoria. All right. So, but uh, we are, it is more populated than Australia. In population, we are bigger than you, almost twice, because we are very faithful in producing children. <laughs> Very faithful. <laughs> we, <laughs> we try to emulate uh, uh, Jacob, Jacob of the Bible, because he had 12 sons, and, uh, and the daughters are not spoken about. He might have had 20 children. <laughs> so a Ugandan man will have uh, like uh, Jacob's children. The only challenge is that uh, some fathers have not been faithful to their children. That's why you have heard that we are doing what we are doing uh, through your support, the support that goes through Hope, uh, which is read by Pastor Bill and Noma. Uh, the fathers, these people who are faithful in producing, they have not been faithful in looking after their children. So we find many children uh, on the street, and uh, many who are not going to, to, to school, and because of that, it has always promoted the uh, instability in our country. Because when people are not working, and there are many, they will find anything to do. And uh, some selfish people, the warlords have been using that, getting them into violence, into fighting. It has been one of the challenges. But we want to thank you very much on behalf of uh, Many people in Uganda, especially the children, I stand here to say thank you to the entire church, to every one of you who have supported HOPE, uh, the, the organization that is led by Bill. Thank you. Your support is doing an impact in the lives of retro children in Uganda. And uh, even some kids who are not Ugandans, but who, are find, who have found themselves in Uganda, the refugees, because Par, uh, 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 currently, Uganda is safe. There is no more fighting. There was a lot of conflict since we got our independence in 1962 from the Britain. But uh, now we are, we are a bit okay. There is no fighting. But still, we, we have the challenge of the refugees who are coming from South Sudan. South Sudan, up to now, there is no peace. They are conflicting, fighting tribe against another tribe. We thought that these people are going to be happy, but uh, it, has not, it, it has turned to be even more dangerous since they, 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 they got their independence. So we have got so many South, South Sudan refugees coming in, uh, Rwandan, some Rwandan refugees, um, many from, from Burundi, many from Congo, from Somalia, you, you hear what is happening in Somalia. Uh, so we have got so many refugees coming in. And we also do ministry with the refugees. We have a, a school there. I want to thank you, all people who are supporting the school in the refugee camp. I know there are some people here who are uh, sponsoring classes. When you sponsor a class, you pay the, the teacher so many children will come and access education. So thank you for what you are doing. And uh, we still need more sponsorship for, uh, for classes in the refugee camp. We have about 1,000 kids going to our school, about 1,000. We will still need more buildings. But for an African child, we are OK. And uh, for an African teacher, the teachers are comfortable teaching 100 kids in the, in the class. Uh, I, I want to invite some teachers who want to apply for 
teaching jobs. <laughs> Come and teach a hundred kids. <laughs> we have some jobs we are advertising. So if we can get some teachers who are interested to come and teach a hundred kids, you know how it will be. I, I don't know whether you people can. But our teachers are comfortable. They are doing that <laughs> because that's what they have to do. So the only need is that if we get sponsorship, someone who can pay for a teacher, then the work will go on. Thank you very much. Otherwise, if you wanted to do any sponsorship, you see Pastor Bill and Noma. I also want to appreciate, because something good happened and we are so happy, we appreciate Nikki for the, uh, the, the, the concert she did. That concert really has turned to be a permanent blessing in one of the villages because we have a village uh, where we build a house. We call it safe house. We call it safe house because of the people who live there. We, we brought these kids into safety. Uh, they are girls. They were vulnerable. They were, some of them were sexually abused. So we rescue such kids and we bring them in and we speak to them, we revive them, and we also have a plan to give them some skills. <clears throat> so we lived with the need of uh, a vacation uh, classroom. Vacation classroom, we want to train them in skills so that when they leave the home, that home, they will be able to stand on their own. So we needed a room. So we thank God very much because out of the fund that was collected from that concert, we are now constructing that classroom and it's going to be good for those kids, the girls. Thank you very much. God bless you. Whatever you have done, may the good Lord bless you always. Thank you very much. Amen. Let's go to the word of God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity you have given us to come together as your children and to listen from you. Holy Spirit, I invite you, come and minister to us. We are all thirsty and hungry to receive from you, Lord. Bible says that you satisfy a hungry soul and you satisfy a thirsty spirit. Lord, we are here thirsty for you. We want to hear from you. Your word is living. It is active. Your word will bring life. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never pass away. All other things in this world, the good things we enjoy, we want to thank you for them. But all of these things are temporary, but your word is eternal. Therefore, we pray that this morning your word will land safely in our hearts and will bring a change and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning we were discussing uh, some words of our Lord Jesus Christ that are found in Matthew chapter 24. And I still feel I should share the same with you people because I believe there are some people who are not here in the morning service. So if you can come with me in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, I'm reading the words, I'm beginning with the words of the apostles. Uh, they were with Jesus and they asked him a question. And I want to thank God that Jesus did not uh, shut them up or not take it serious. But he responded and answered their question. And I believe that these people did a question that is really representing a question to any Christian, any serious Christian, any serious Jesus follower that would ask Jesus had just mentioned something when you read in verse 1, chapter 24, verse 1 and verse 2, which I did not concentrate on. Uh, he had just answered something because they were telling him about the building of the temple, how this, the temple was very strong. Those of you who are Bible readers, you know that this is a temple that was built by a younger governor called Zerubbabel. It is not the temple of, of King Solomon. The temple of King Solomon was destroyed. And uh, when Zerubbabel came with other people who had gone, who had been taken into captivity uh, to Babylon, they began to rebuild the temple. 
And it took more than 40 years to rebuild it. And it was magnificent. It was very good. It was very strong. And now the, the, the disciples are showing Jesus the temple, how it was built, how strong it was. And Jesus surprises them in verse 2. He says, and Jesus answered, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left there upon another that shall not be thrown down. So it was a surprise to them to hear that because they did not expect that. They were showing him the strength of the temple, how it was built, and Jesus in the spirit is seeing what was about to happen on this temple. They are happy because the temple was built 40 years they were building that temple. That's why at one time when he was preaching before the Pharisees, he told them, they asked him a sign, and he said, you destroy this temple, I will build it in three days. And they said, who are you? This temple has been built for more than 40 years, and you say you are going to build it in three temples, in three days. Anyway, that time he was meaning about his body. You know, he had a lot of conflict with the Pharisees. They, were, they used to challenge him. And one of the challenges, they ask him for a sign. He says, you just destroy this temple. I will build it in three days. They thought he was talking about the temple of Zerubbabel, the temple that was built 40 years. So they say, the temple was built in 40 years, and you say you are going to build it in three days. Now this is another event. The disciples are telling him, they are showing him the temple, the strength of the temple. But Jesus, who sees in the spiritual, who does not see according to the physical, he tells them, you see this strength, how it is built, how it is? I tell you the truth. There is no stone that is going to be left on another stone that will not be destroyed. So when he mentioned that, they picked interest. They wanted to know more about that. In verse 3, which I was sharing in, in first service, they ask him this question. Now as he sat on Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Now here we find three questions. One, they wanted to know when will these things be? The things of the temple to be destroyed. You say, when will these things happen? Actually, that temple was destroyed after 70 years. It was destroyed in 70, uh, 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 AD 70. So it was completely destroyed. And up to now, uh, the, it's the site, they are trying to know where was the site. It was completely destroyed. That means that prophecy came to pass. But at that very moment, the disciples wanted to know when will that happen? Because it seemed impossible. Always the word of God, when God says about things, it is like it will never happen. But Jesus says heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. He says this generation will never end until all that I've said will come to pass. It was like it will never happen, but it actually happened. But the good thing is that the disciples picked interest. They wanted it to know. After time when they sat somewhere, they come to him privately. They say, Master, we want to know. Tell us. When will these things happen? When will these things of the temple to be destroyed and no stone upon another stone? When will it happen? And another question. We want to know what will be the sign of your coming back? Because he had also talked about his return, his second return. He was telling them about that, that he will come back. He will come like a thief in the night when no one expects him, he will come. So he gave them a lot of uh, parables about his return. He says, who is that faithful servant that his master will find him still doing what the master told him to do? But some servants will say, ah, the master has delayed and maybe he will never come back and they will begin to drink and to do funny things with 
the sinners and the master is going to come in a time when they did not expect him. So as I think they wanted to know the signs so that they will be, they will set themselves ready. He said, tell us the sign of your coming. Maybe they wanted to, to know when they begin to see the signs uh, of his coming, they get ready. And also they ask him another question, they say, and also tell us the signs of the end of the age. Three questions in one. One, when will these things come to happen? The, the temple to be destroyed. The next one, when, what will be the sign of your return? And the last one, what will be the sign of the end time? And Jesus opens his mouth to answer these questions. That's what I wanted so much uh, this morning to think about, to discuss with you. To me, according to the signs he gives here, I see this is the real time. Let us go and see uh, the signs, because they have asked him now, he wants to, to answer the questions in verse 4. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. The first warning, he warns them, he said, Take heed that no one deceives you. Is forward telling of deception. According to him, first of all, among these questions, among his prophecy, one came to pass. 70 AD, the temple was completely destroyed, exactly as he said, that no stone is going to remain on another. If those people were still alive, they would say, what? Jesus, what Jesus said has come to pass. Because no stone remained upon another. That means that even the rest of the prophecy, what he says will come to pass. Because if one happened, which no one expected to happen, and it happened, then that means also all these other prophecies that he speaks together with this one will also come to pass. No one knows the day, the time, but they will come to pass. So the first warning he gives them, he says, all right, you want to know the signs. You want to know when it will happen. The first thing, take heed that no one deceives you. Brethren, we are living in the days when the world is getting deceived. Everywhere, in Africa, in Europe, I know here, even here in Australia, everywhere there is a deception. The world is getting deceived as if uh, what Jesus said will never come to pass. As if the Bible is not true. As if the words in the Bible can never happen. So he wants them to say, take heed, no one should deceive you. Nobody should deceive you. The next verse, he talks about how the deception is going to come. Verse 5. He says, for many will come in my name. Now, in my name, this one needs more explanation by the grace of God, by the Spirit of God. Because it is not necessarily, yes, there are going to be some people and they have come. Yeah, in Uganda, we have a man who calls himself, actually, we have had two. One of them has so far, three, two of them have so far died. Unfortunately, but one is still alive. Those who have come out and have seen on the uh, on the social media, another one is in America who says he's the Jesus, is the Savior. But this one does not necessarily mean that this deception is going to come openly saying, "I am Jesus." Yes, there are going to be some who are going to be bold enough to say they are Jesus. But if we go deep to understand, verse 5, he says, For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. Now, when you go deep into revelation, spiritual revelation, we, we will need it to know, to interpret who is Christ. Christ is not just a, just a name. It's a work. 
Christ is a savior. Christ is the answer. Christ means the savior, means the answer, means the redeemer, means the solution giver, the one who has the solution, the one who has the answer. He says, men are going to come in my name. Which means some men are going to come ask the answer to the question of the life. Ask the answer to the question of what is happening. And they are going to deceive many. Christ means the savior. Men are going to come as the savior of the society. The savior of the generation. The, 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 the answer that is going to bring solution, that is going to bring peace, the answer to mankind, the answer to human race. Today we have got so many answers. Men are getting deceived. They think, ah, there's no, that's why Jesus said that he's coming when actually he continued to talk about his coming, his return, because they wanted the sign. Uh, he says it shall be like in the days of Noah. Before the, 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 the floods came, people were saying, peace, peace, there's no problem. People were comfortable. They say, peace, peace, you don't need to think about God. Please don't, don't even bring that because you are going to stress people. Don't mention God. Don't, 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 please don't, don't, don't. You will stress people. There's peace. No need of God. There's answer. It says, as it was in the days of Noah, when people were saying, peace, peace, and the destruction came upon them without their knowledge. He says, so it shall be the return of the Son of Man. Brethren, as a church, we must be warned. We, I'm not here to scare you. I'm not here to, to cause stress to you, but I'm here to relieve you of stress. I am here to relieve you of stress. Jesus is the answer to every question. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the problem solver. It is not the internet. No, it is not the internet. It's not the websites. It's not the Facebook. It is not, it's not the Twitter. It says many shall come in my name and they are going to deceive many. People are saying, people think now the, the technology has answered it. No, the technology cannot answer it. Materialism has answered it. No way. That's why today, should I tell you something? You have more, you have more suicide, people committing suicide than in Africa. Yet you are a society that have these material things. It's not bad to have material things. But I want to tell you, it's not the answer. Material things are not the Christ. It is not the Redeemer. Technology can never be the Redeemer. Nothing can ever replace Jesus. Jesus is the only Savior. He's the only Redeemer. Is the only problem solver. That's why today we hear people parking beautiful cars and commit suicide. Leaving beautiful houses and going to commit suicide. Leaving millions of dollars on their account and still commit suicide. Yet you come to, to, to Uganda, to that refugee camp, you find people who have lost their belongings, they have lost some of their relatives, some of them, they are even crippled, the, the, the bombs, the landmines have taken part of their body, but you find them rejoicing and praising God, they are happy. You wonder where could this pe where can these people get joy? And they cannot commit suicide, they are happy. Some of them are diseased, but they are happy praising God. Where does that joy come from? From Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
He says, take heed that you should not be deceived. No one should deceive you. Because many Christ are going to come. Many saviors are going to come. Many problem solvers are going to come. But they are going to increase solo. People are depressed. People are solo. People are stressed. Yet they have everything. For us in Africa, we think, oh, I, for those in Africa who do not have Jesus, uh, for the church, we are different. For believers who have understood the truth, that's why I've told you that you go to the refugee camp, you'll find these people dancing and jumping for the Lord. Happy, peaceful. You wonder where do they get the joy? They don't know what is the next meal go- where the next meal is going to come from, but they are comfortable. I don't know whether they are going to have supper or they will not have, but they are ha- ha- happy. Children are happy. When you find them, their toys, when you look at the toys of the African kids, I don't think any child here will be happy to have such toys. Pastor Bill and Noma and, uh, and uh, Jono, they have seen this. And on this note, I want to invite you, Pastor, please come and visit. Come and visit us. All of you, I invite you to Uganda. I'll be at the airport waiting for you anytime you can. I'll be there. I'll pack there my, my, my good car. It's very good. Sometime we, we stop somewhere to add in some water in the radiator when it is burning out. But we get there. Pastor Bill, have, I, have we not always got there? So I'll be there for you. And I'll wait for you uh, on the airport with that wonderful car, and I will drive you back down there, and you will enjoy the, the, the good of the land. We will feed you with matoke, that is banana, and we will feed you with posho, that is, uh, that is uh, maize, maize flour, and the beans. And you will come here having had, added more weight. It's good there. Uh, and it's safe. Please don't fear. There's no more problem. There was those days of problems, uh, some of us which uh, caused us. You have heard that one, at one time I was a child soldier. I was a street, bo- a street kid. And from the street, some people who were us enticed us to go and fight the battles we did not even understand. And we went into the jungles to fight the... But it was good. We fought a bad government. I, I, I appreciate God. I thank God that I participated. Because at first, when I went there, I did, I did not have a reason why I went there. Because I was a small boy, I didn't know why we were fighting. And I was used with the violence in the city. But I was taken there, like many other boys. And some actually died without knowing the cause why they are fighting. I was lucky. I never died. I came back. From the war. In 1986, we took over. The rebels took over. And now it's the government that is in power up to now. We just pray that we shall see. You know, we have never seen a peaceful transition in Uganda. We have never seen a peaceful handover. One, one leader handing over to another one. No. For us, we change leadership by gun. We thought that this government is going to give us that gift. Up to now, we are praying, we are begging the president that please give us that gift. We want to see it happening in Uganda. Handing over power without bloodshed. But it seems it is, we need your prayer. Because after 30 years, the man still wants to, to be the president. He has been a good man, but I think he, he, his goodness should also involve handing over power peacefully. He should not be pushed by a gun. Because if he remains there, I am afraid it might happen again. Because it has been happening. We have, we have, so, far, we have so far had seven presidents. But each president must go by a gun. And with a lot of bloodshed. Of course, destroying what we had already developed. That's why we are always behind. Because when it is a war, we are going to destroy even the development. These schools you people have helped us to build might end up being destroyed. That's why we, but we believe 
uh, we are going to see that because we are on our knees praying. With God, all things are possible. And you people pray for us. But currently, there is peace. There is no fighting. Don't fear to visit us. It's peace everywhere. Even Connie is no longer there. You heard about Connie, who was in northern Uganda. He was flushed out. Now there is peace everywhere. So don't fear to visit. But we are talking about uh, the answer. Jesus is answering three questions. When will this happen? The temple, when will it be destroyed? That one happened. And another one, when will it be the sign of your return? And the last one, when will be the sign of the end time? And now when he's answering, he, he emphasized this, do not be deceived. That's what I wanted to give you, servants of God who are here. Do not allow anything deceive you. Nothing can replace Jesus. He is the same yesterday to done forever. He's going to remain the same. He is the Savior. He is the Prince of Peace. Until you get him, you shall never have peace. You cannot replace him with money. You cannot replace him with technology. You cannot replace him with science, with politics. I thank God for your politics is good because you are very careful. You don't want to hurt others. You are always correct. You don't want to hurt anybody. But we must be careful. Otherwise, it might rob us of the Savior. And we replace him with something else. We need to stand firm. Jesus Christ goes ahead to tell them of other saints. He says, you will hear wars and rumors of wars. You will hear uh, diseases, pestilence. You will see earthquake, calamities, destruction. We have all heard all this, and it is happening in our days. And the rumors of wars, you hear what is happening in the world, everywhere. It has been in Africa, but it has extended to Arab countries. There's no people fighting. The one group is fighting on behalf of their God, and another one also on the behalf of the same God. You, you wonder why God would bring people conflict and kill one another. But all of them are convinced that they are fighting for God. Nation is rising against nation. Tribe against tribe. You hear what is happening in Africa. The troubles in South Sudan is because of tribes. One tribe is fighting another tribe. They are all South Sudanese. You heard what happened in Rwanda. Just people speaking the same language, but there was genocide. About one million was killed in one month. Just in a month. Actually, I happen to be a descendant of Rwanda. You, I have one of my parents is from Rwanda. Is a survivor. My mother is actually my uncle's side, my mother's side. Many people died in Rwanda in that genocide. Rwanda is a small nation. It has one language. They all speak Runya Rwanda. But they have three tribes. But the two ones are the stronger one. One is, is, is okay for them. They live in the bush. They are bushmen. They are called the Batwa. They are still the backward. They don't want to come into civilization. Those ones have no problem. But the Batusi and the Bahutu, these people have always conflicted. At one time, the, the, the Bahutu wanted to kill all Batusi, finish them. They thought, if we finish this race, this tribe, we will be okay. And they wanted to kill everyone called them Batusi. By chance, God's chance, some survived. But those are the, 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 the prophecy of Jesus said that you will hear wars and rumors of war. Today you hear what is happening. I don't know whether you take a, a keen interest of what is happening. Uh, you hear uh, North Korea. The man has posed a serious uh, threat on the whole world. No one knows how it is going to end. The man has developed the missiles that can carry the, uh, the, 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 the nuclear to as far as to part of America. They have tried to tame him, but what? Whatever they are doing is breaking the chains. No one knows what is going to happen. Jesus prophesied about that. He said, you will hear them, but don't fear because that is, don't be troubled because that's just the beginning. 
He says they will hate you for my name's sake. Today when we, we hear how uh, Christianity is spoken about, people hate Christianity, they, they blame Christianity for every bad things. Yes, I know there are some Christians who have messed up, but that one should not be labeled or put on all the entire Christianity. So he's, that prophecy seems to have come. But he says, verse 11, And then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Verse 12 says, And because of lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. This one is not good for the church. The love of many is not talking about the world, many in the world, but is talking about the church, the believers. Because lawlessness is going to abound, is going to increase in the world, the love of many Christians will grow cold. Today we have a cold church. church the church, people are becoming cold in the things of God. They are not bold enough to stand their faith. Some people will not even want to be identified as Christian. They will only be Christian in the church, but when they are outside there, they say, oh, please, please, you have to be careful. I don't want to offend others. But the Bible says, well, how will others believe unless someone has preached to them? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. That's why Paul has tried to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2. He says, stand firm. Endure as the soldier of Christ. We are called to endure. Jesus tells us to endure hardship as Christ, uh, as soldiers for Christ. We are soldiers for the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us to endure hardship. We have to stand firm as the church of Christ because we are the light of the world. He says no one can light the candle and cover it. Then you will have done nothing to the world. If we cover the light, then we will not have done anything to our neighbors, to our friends, to our family members, because we don't want to offend them and we cover the light. They need Christ. They need the Savior. The whole world needs the answer. Because we have agreed that technology cannot replace Jesus, cannot be the answer. That will be a lie. And it is a lie to people. The internet has become the answer, but people are continually becoming restless, continually becoming depressed, stressed. They are trying to find the answer. There is no answer. And the younger people are ending up committing suicide. Jesus is the answer. When Jesus comes into your life, your life will never be the same again. I'm talking about something I know. I lived 22 years when I had no Jesus. I was violent. I became violent everywhere. I was looking for the answer. Whatever I did, I did because I was empty. Inside myself, there was emptiness. There was something missing. I took drugs, but the drugs could not feel the emptiness in me. I took alcohol. I became violent on the street. I caused a lot of not good things to others. But I was not satisfied. But the day I received Jesus, I was settled. Today I'm a settled man. I'm a happy man. I've learned to live all the life. There is time when I, I, I go without, but I'm, I'll always be happy. I feel I'm happy. The joy of the Lord has become my strength. So nothing can replace him. I'm a person who tested on the other life and I've tested on this life. I come out to encourage people. Those of us who have Jesus, let us be firm in him. He is the answer. Jesus says that because of lawlessness of that time shall abound, the love of many will grow cold. I feel bad when I see Christians uh, burying their head in the sand, fearing, uh, they say, all right, you know, it's not, you know, there is a lot, a lot of blame on the church. You know, it's, it's not safe to identify yourself as a Christian. I want to encourage you and I stir you up. The 
regardless of what is the opinion, the public opinion, stand firm. You are the one who has the answer. Jesus is the answer, and you have him. You have that light. Don't cover that light. Politely, wisely, in a good spirit, let us share Jesus with everybody. Let us pray to the Lord to give us the, the, the wise approach. Always, wherever you are, find how can I share Jesus with these people? How can I bring in Jesus? Pastor Bill and Noma, they took me to this show of the children. Uh, I went there the first and the second I could not go back. They sang beautiful songs throughout. And uh, this is a, 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 a school with a wonderful name. Because when they told me that it is Emmanuel, uh, uh, Emmanuel what? Emmanuel College. Uh, I went there so anxious to, to, to enjoy this beautiful singing. And it was beautiful, beautiful singing. But I was surprised in all the songs that they staged. There was no word mentioning God or mentioning Jesus. I said, what? Is this Emmanuel? Do they understand the name of Emmanuel? Can you imagine if the Emmanuel school will not mention Jesus and, <laughs> and God, which school will he mention? Because I expected Emmanuel to have some songs talking about this Emmanuel. Because Emmanuel means God is with us. I was looking for God in it. There was no God. I was somehow disappointed. I said, oh, could this be what Jesus prophesied? Because of lawlessness would abound. The love of many will do what? Grow cold. The lawlessness in the public, in the community, has caused the Emmanuel, wonderful name of the school, to fear to mention God. The love of many will do what? Grow cold. Brethren, the, promise, the prophecies of Jesus... Talking about his return. Remember, he was answering a question. Tell us the sign of his return. Am I wrong when I said that Jesus is about to come? Are these not the signs of his return? Because of lawlessness will abound, the love of many, the love of the church members, the love of believers will grow cold. I pray for you that you will not be among them. I say I pray for you in the name of Jesus that none of you in this building will be among those whose love is going to grow cold. But it is a prophecy and it must come to pass. But the good news is the last verse I want to read and I will be done. The, the next verse, verse 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. And this gospel of the kingdom, I pray that the believers, I pray that the pastors and the servants of God in Australia and everywhere will be bold enough on their platform to preach the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom of God that is coming, it is coming. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his words will never pass away. The kingdom he announced will come. Because this is a kingdom that was even announced by men like Daniel. In the book of Daniel, Daniel interprets the dream of the king, king Nebuchadnezzar. You understand that dream? Because the king dreamt a big dream. He dreamt a statue that was having different materials. The head was gold. Another part was of silver. Another part was of iron. Another part was of clay. Of different, different materials. That was the image he dreamt. And he refused to give the dream. He wanted someone to tell the dream and interpret it. And Daniel, by the spirit of God, told the dream and interpreted it. Because in the dream he had seen a stone that was cut from nowhere and it came and crushed this huge, huge, strong, magnificent, great, glorious, uh, glorious image. A stone from nowhere came and crushed it completely. And after crushing it, the stone became 
a mountain. Briefly, Daniel tells him that this stone you saw is another kingdom. The kingdom of God shall come and crush all other kingdoms and it shall be established forever. Brethren, that is the kingdom. That is the kingdom where we have come. Let us take it serious. Be serious with it. If you are saved, if you are a Christian, be serious with your Christianity. We thank God for the grace of God. But Paul tells Timothy, he says, stand firm in the grace that we have received from Christ. Even in the grace, we need to stand firm. We need to stand firm in the grace that we have received from Christ. That is the kingdom. He says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached everywhere to nations, to be a witness, and the end shall come. This is the gospel of the kingdom, telling people to be ready for the kingdom of God. Heaven is better than Australia. I say heaven is better than America. Heaven is better than Africa. Heaven is better than any place on the face of the world. I pray for in the name of Jesus that you inherit the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Because God has counted you worthy, for the kingdom. Don't take it for granted. Be strong. Stand firm in your faith. Do not be shy. You are the light of the world. Let us pray.